All right. You guys want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. We're going to add inheritance to our Bounce Evolve demo. And we are going to really utilize some of the features of C++ to actually make a mini architecture that maybe something like a game would use, an object-oriented architecture. And um, I'm excited to do that because this is where you really start seeing what C++ can do and how much uh, of a pain in the ass it would be to do this in pure C. So, let's get started with the basic idea of what we're trying to do here. So right now we have uh, essentially an array of these things called balls and we draw those um, just by calling draw on them. So basically, you know, they're classes, they're, uh, they're arrays of objects of, of the type bouncy ball and there really doesn't seem to be any room here for any variability of the object types. So we're going to go ahead and change that and the way we're going to do that is we're basically going to create a new what's called base class and we're going to inherit from that base class. So fundamentally, what inheritance is, is it is a way to define a class that can be reused by a, another class. So basically, one class will inherit from its base class, and everything that is inside that base class will become available to the subclass or the child class. So I'll, I'll basically lead that. I'll, sh I'll, I'll show you guys by example what that might look like. So we're going to create um, essentially a new source file here and we're going to save it as a header and I'm basically going to call this drawable. Is that what I want to call it? Um, now I'm going to call it game object. The game object class essentially is going to be your introduction to a concept that we call inheritance and it's going to be the introduction to a concept that we call polymorphic inheritance. And I'm introducing both of those at the same time, I guess because I'm an asshole, but I don't really see a, um, a reason to introduce inheritance by itself. So let me explain exactly what happens when an object inherits from another one. So I've defined this really nice looking game object class here that essentially is telling us that a game object can be drawn and it can be updated and that's basically it. Now if you guys remember our original bouncy ball class what I'd like to do is essentially have bouncy ball become a subclass or a derived class inherited from game object. The way I accomplish that is I basically include the game object header in bouncy balls header and I use the syntax basically colon And I basically say that now Bouncy Ball is a public subclass or public child of Game Object, in the sense that everything that is inside Game Object is now available to Bouncy Ball. It's essentially as if I've merged one class into another, which basically means that any anything that I put inside of Game Object, such as if I had a variable in here maybe called um, position x and y. It is now inside a game object. I can access X and Y from Bouncy Ball because of two things. One, because I'm a child or a uh, subclass of game object. And two, because I've defined these uh, access scope for these two variables or these two class members as protected. And protected is basically like private with the special caveat that all child classes can access these things directly as well. Not from the outside, but from the inside of a child class. So basically I put this X and Y thing as something that's common to all game objects. I'm going to do the same thing with a set position function. So this used to be something specific to bouncy ball. Now I'd like to make it something specific to all game objects. Set position is now something that is basically inherited from game object into bouncy ball. I know I'm going fast, but I, I'm doing the best I can to explain this so that it makes sense because this stuff God, C++ is so much more complicated than C, and it's the reason why I always recommend people learn C first. So here's an example of me taking this and migrating it over. So like I said, set position used to be something that Bouncy Ball can do, but for the sake of me re-architecting my game classes, I'd like to take it and make it something common to all game objects. And I basically move the method over to the uh, game object class, and now it is something that is available to all game object subclasses. 
So now that bouncy ball is basically a derived class of game object, I can now use game object as the least common denominator for everything that I want to do in my game, assuming that I I expose what I need to the game object class. So if I was to run this, everything works the same. As you can see, set position when I call it um, on bouncy ball. When I call these functions, such as set position, even though it doesn't it's not inside of the bouncy ball class, it's still accessible because it's part of the um, super class or the uh, the base class. I really want to drill that in that because it is in here, um, it is as if it was defined in the bouncy ball class. But it's a way for me to reuse that code if I have more than one subclass of game object. I don't have to write a set position for every single one and a draw for it or, or an x and a y. I don't have to define that for every single one. Um, it makes it really nice. So I'm, notice I haven't really talked about draw and update yet and that's because that gets into that whole polymorphic concept that's going to be insane when I actually explain it. So suppose I wanted to have another type of game object. Um, well that's doable. Um, essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to call one, um, I'm going to define a new one and I'm going to call it plane. And I don't mean plane like a geometric plane, I mean like an airplane. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and create a new source file. This is going to be our header. And I'm going to call this plane header class. A couple things I want to do um, to make sure I don't F this up. One is I want to include game object everywhere that it needs to be used. So plane, just like bouncy ball, will be a public subclass of game object. And at the very least, I know that it's going to, I wish those would get out of my face so bad. Um, I'm basically going to define these three methods. Yes. That are common to everything that um, can be drawn. So I know for a fact that I'm going to at least need a texture. Everything else is probably, I'm not so sure it's up in the air. I'm going to create a new C++ file. Remember, for every class, um, there is a header file to, def to define the class structure, and then a uh, C++ file to define the implementation of the class methods. So I'm going to go ahead and, and define um, plain CPP here, include its own header, and define these three methods for it. So this is our plane. It is another type of game object. So as you'll notice, we have two game object types now. We have the bouncy ball and we have the plane. They are both subclasses of game objects. So if I was to draw a tree um, of inheritance, it would look something like game object comes from game object on the left, plane comes from game object on the right, bouncy ball. And I could even further inherit from plane and bouncy ball. And uh, As you'll notice, um, big, big C++ systems um, that have very complicated architectures will have many multiple levels of inheritance. So I almost hit the power off key and my whole Mac would have turned off. That would have been hilarious. Um, okay. So I'm going to use bouncy ball as a guide for implementing plane because I basically know a lot of this stuff is going to be the same. So set texture, sure, cool. Draw, probably going to be very similar except maybe the size of my airplane is not 32 by 32. Let me check into that. It's 32 by 21. So that's going to be different. Update's going to be very different because I'm not doing any of this elastic collision. As a matter of fact, for now I'm going to leave it completely alone. And um, that is awesome. I almost screwed up bouncy ball instead of plane. Yeah, so plane's going to have no update, and there's going to be no elasticity at all. 32 by 21, I almost put in the wrong place. Okay, we're looking good here. All right. So we still haven't really gotten to the polymorphic part yet, but um, don't worry too much about that.
let's go ahead and find my uh, main file here. I believe that's called ball. So we have an array of bounty balls. Let's go ahead and make an array of planes too. Um, really, actually, at this point, I really only care about just having one, so I think that's fine. We'll do plane, plane. So when I initialize everything, which is somewhere down here, I, I load a ball and I supply it as basically the texture to the plane. I'm going to go ahead and do that again down here. But in this case, I'm going to load plane. There should be a texture somewhere. Yeah, it's up there. So here's me, you know, nothing you guys never seen before, loading the plane texture into an SDL texture. And at this point, supplying that texture to the plane object. And then um, I do believe because I'm very smart that I actually don't um, destroy this texture like I'm supposed to, um, which is a memory leak. Let me just take care of that real quick. Redefinition of game object. Oh, that's fun. I get to talk to you guys about header guards. So um, I really don't want to go into this in too much detail, but basically whenever you have a header file, if it gets included more than once, you'll get a redefinition error. Um, it's one of those extremely ugly things about C++ and C that just never seem to go away. Um, one way to solve that is to basically at the top of your header files that are being over-included in really every header file you ever make, you should use this special thing called pragma once which modern compilers will, detect, compilers will detect and basically understand that you only ever want this header file to be included once. That'll get that error to go away. You can look up and Google pragma once and header guards and, and, and uh, that'll explain that a little bit more. I don't want to harp too much on it because this video is probably going to be pretty long already. Okay, so I have created my bounty ball and, or I've created my plane object. I've defined everything it needs to work. Um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it some arbitrary initial position. I don't know, 100 comma 100 sounds, well, 500, 100 sounds fantastic. And everywhere that I update my balls, eh, I'm going to um, update and draw my plane. So plane draw renderer. I'm doing this the hard way first so then I can show you guys why polymorphism and, and, and um, that type of inheritance really helps. Because right now the only thing I've really demonstrated is that, oh, I've reused set position from a base class, which is kind of cool. But uh, this, can, this is about to get a whole hell of a lot cooler. Um, if I could shut up and actually, you know, keep moving on here. So when I call dot .update for the airplane, or the balls, I want to call it for the airplane. There's a little airplane. It's not moving. That's fine. Let's define what update should do for the airplane. Cool story, bro. Um, well, in this case, something extremely simple like x minus equals 2 is just fine. It'll fly from right to left. And there's a stupid little airplane. All right. So I have my airplane. It's very, very basic uh, functionality, but it's another type of game object that does something besides bouncing. Cool. So I have a very basic game architecture. Everything stems from game object. But notice.